Part 5, Industry Foundation Classes, Part 1. This is shortened to the term IFC and is governed by the international standard ISO 16739. Some people will think it's just a file format, what's so special about it. Others might think it's a dumb 3D model that you can't do anything with. And others just don't want to go anywhere near it. So I want to explain what it actually is. The standard of ISO 16739 is actually free and it's a website. And this is because it cannot be written down as a traditional document. Like many standards, over the years it gets revised and updated. The latest official version is IFC 4.0.2.1. It is managed by Building Smart International and was first released back in 1996. It's a software neutral open data standard, so it puts the information first above software. IFC can be used across all information management activities in ISO 19650. So all processes use the same consistent information layer throughout, from specifying information requirements, planning information delivery, the delivery itself, and then very importantly, checking. It means when two applications can read IFC, it improves interoperability. The receiving platform knows where to look for the data it needs and what the relationships are, so it too can make sense of it. This allows us to automate tasks such as checking, analysing large data sets and carrying out predictions. Humans see buildings and infrastructure as physical things, bricks and mortar. A computer, though, needs to be able to understand what it is in computer language. And that's what IFC is. It's a digital representation of a facility. At its core is an object based data model, which provides the rules to give everything a unique place and to connect it all up. This is represented by the blue circle. It contains three important parts, entities, attributes, basic properties, and these are all linked by relationships. It's the relationships which make it so powerful. So an instance of a pump is associated with a space and a pump type. The space is located on a building story and may be part of a zone. The story is part of a facility and that sits on a site. The pump will also be part of a system and be connected to pipe fittings. It will have detailed classification assigned to it and also be referenced in documents. It will have basic information like a name, description, ID and properties like pressure. It might also have risk associated to it. And what does it look like? Well, I'm not even going to attempt to describe this in computer language. So here's a picture. And that's just one pump. Now think of everything else which makes up a facility and how everything interlinks. This is mind blowingly complex and it needs to be. These links or relationships are so important and when we don't recognise these, we miss out on so much more useful information, which can make our projects perform so much better. To communicate the data model, it needs to be given a language and a way of representing it. Just like an architect conveys the abstract rules of a building layout using drawings and drafting conventions. For the data model, this language is called a schema, which can be represented graphically. IFC uses several schema, Currently, the principal one is called the Express Schema, which is represented by ISO 103311. And using Express, this is what a tiny part of the IFC data model looks like. This is just like the last two slides in that the entities, which are now in boxes, are connected via lines which create the relationships. And to most, this just looks like gobbledygook. And that's fine because it's a computer that needs to read it, not people. And this operates in the back end of software. This is a building or infrastructure facility turned into pure logic. From this, a computer will know that pump 10 is a circulator pump. It's 300 mil high, is made of a curved surface and uses 100 watts of energy per hour. In the UK, it's classified as a pressure booster pump. It's connected to the low temperature hot water system 6 via two iron pipe fittings. One is a bend and the other is a junction and is located in room 100. Room 100 is 2 by 4 metres, located on the third floor of a school called Woodland Primary, which has a gross internal area of 2,000 square metres. Now, can you tell me of anything else in industry which can join all that information up to help a computer understand it? 
IFC may have a fixed schema behind it to maintain the relationships, but from an information specification point of view, there is flexibility and it can't predefine everything. So there is an option to add custom properties and these can be found in the building smart data dictionary, regional lexicons, or can be bespoke from a client. But it can also link to other external sources, object libraries, documents and classification. These are considered as part of the overall IFC schema and have relationships like everything else. For example, using the IFC schema, a computer knows that our pump is classified as PR 65538612 centrifugal pumps and that the classification system is called Uniclass 2015. And this is referenced from the 1.18 version of the PR table published in May 2020. So classification actually slots into the schema. The whole IFC schema is huge as it contains most of the digital parts you would ever need during a project. It's not just elements, there are processes, resources, people, we could really go to town. And if you wanted, you could create on-site work schedules from it to RFIs to orders. It captures so much for many different purposes and you wouldn't want to exchange the whole thing and software wouldn't be able to implement the whole thing. So we need to be able to filter it into mini schemas.